All right. I'm kind of in like a weird position here. Okay, here we go. Hey, friends. It's Paula. Um, here for a little Wednesday night yin. I'm just going to try to tag people here if this works. Maybe not. Okay. There we go. So I can tag Chandra. And we can get going here. All right. All right, it's not working. I'm gonna give up. <laughs> All right, hopefully you're watching Chandra. But we're gonna do a little again on Wednesday night, like we normally do. All right, so we're gonna get started now. What we're gonna do here is we're gonna start in a supportive child's pose. All right, so that's a little different than how we usually start our yin. If you have a bolster, a pillow from your couch, a pillow from your bed, you can use that. If you have a blanket, right, it doesn't have to be a perfect yoga blanket like this, it can be anything, all right, you're just gonna roll it up into a little ball and you're gonna bring it so that as you come into your child's pose, right, you have the blanket or the block between your legs, right? So it gets your belly coming to land on. Same reason the blanket is come under my chest and I can take a block, put my head, come along. Like I said before, you could just do it with a bolster. And it's like this, right? So I want you to find that nice, comfortable place to start. If you hate child's pose, I know I have a lot of child's pose haters out there, right? If child's pose is totally not your thing, then you can always just come up. You can sit in easy sit or you can lay on your back all those options are available to you, right? So you guys settle in. And then we're gonna start to bring our focus to our breath. Do you have to control your breath at first? Really at all during in, right? We're just focusing on the breath, noticing the breath. We're letting it take over. Letting the breath take us to a place where there are no distractions. Fully focused just on your mat, your practice. Fully present just in your mat, your practice. Right? That's what we want to do with our yin. take over you. So if you don't really have to control it that much in the end, we'll do a little bit of moving with our breath tonight, but mostly so you just want to become aware of it. Get in sync with it. Let it ground you to your mat, your practice. Everybody who's joining us, maybe it's harder than it looks. It's all good. So it's important that we let ourselves be in stillness just for these first few moments. best thing your can do for you, it's the best thing in can do for you, is ground you to the present moment. So you're not thinking about what's going to happen tomorrow. You're not thinking about what already happened today. You're just right here, right now. So a couple more breaths here in your child's pose. And when you're ready to come up, right, we're just going to bring ourselves slowly up. Right, come up to seated. You're going to take that bolster.
bolster. Move it out of the way. We'll get back to it later. Right? Or your blanket in your block if that's what you're using. Or just your blanket, whatever you're using. And now you're going to bring yourself around. Come down to your back. All right, so I'm going to lay down on my back here. All right, and then take my left leg long. Hug my right knee into my chest. Okay, so we're just going to do a little alternating here. You can lift your head and shoulders up and drive your nose towards your right knee if you want to, or you can keep everything a little more relaxed. But we're going to switch it out here. So you're going to take your right leg, take it long. You're keeping the little basket with your hands because your left knee comes in. So you just catch it with the little basket. And again, you can lift your head and shoulders up, press your forehead toward your knees, or you can keep it more relaxed and keep everything down. So let's just switch back and forth another a couple times. So take your left leg long, bring that right knee, hug it all the way in. Right, whether you're lifting your head and shoulders up or not, you're taking that knee and pulling it towards your chest with your hands. So those hip flexors start to release a little bit. All right, so just do that a couple more times on each side. And then we're going to take it all the way back down. All right, so now from here, let your hands come to your sides. Okay. Make sure you're looking straight up towards the sky. Now see if with your hands on the ground, lift one leg straight up to the sky, then lift the other leg straight up to the sky. So now we're here kind of in a waterfall, but we're not going to stay here. All right, you're going to take your legs just a little bit apart and then bend into your knees. So pulling your knees into your chest. Right, so it's kind of like a happy baby position. Maybe it's not how you take your happy baby, but feet slightly apart, knees as close into your chest as you can get them. Then you're going to take those hands up, reach for the inside soles of your feet. Ideally, if it has to be the outside sole or the heel, that's fine. If you can just grab your ankle or your shin or your knee, that's fine. But try to do it from the inside, right? And then rock side to side, just a couple times like we always do. Just giving yourself a little spinal massage, waking up the spine a little bit. All right, now from here, you're going to take your left leg, keep your left leg right where it is, right? So my left knee is going to stay bent in, I'm pulling it down towards the ground. I'm going to take my right leg and take it straight, pressing my right heel up towards the ceiling. So I'm starting to open up the right leg. Now you can start to rock again here. Just take two or three breaths. And then come to a stop. Now you're going to bend into your left knee. Take, or sorry, that's your right knee. Bend into your right knee. Again, you're pulling that right knee in toward your shoulder. Now you're going to straighten out your left leg. So you're trying to push that left leg straight, drive that left heel up towards the ceiling. Maybe you take a couple of rocks right here. Some more breaths. And then from there, bend into that left knee. Now you're going to bring both knees in again. Release your feet. Just take both knees, bring your knees together, and then hug them into your chest. Now, just like we did before here, you're going to keep your right knee hugged into your chest. Let your left leg extend long, let your left, I know my left foot's going off the ground, I mean off, out of the frame, but pretend you can see my left foot, it's on the ground right now, right? I'm hugging my right knee in. Keep your head and shoulders down. Now you're going to take your left hand to the outside of your right knee. Your right arm's going to go out long, straight out of your shoulder blade, and you're just drawing that right knee across to the left side of your body. Okay, so it's a single knee twist here. It's going to have to be deep. Take it, if you can push that right knee all the way to the ground, then you can, right? but you don't have to force it yet. Right now we're just opening everything up. We're not holding anything. A super long time, a little longer time than we would if we were warming up for a vinyasa class or something. Right? But we're trying to open up all of our joints here before we really get into those long holds. All right, from here, bring that right knee back to center. Give it a little hug in and then switch it out. Take your right leg, let it go all the way long. Take your left knee, hug it in to your chest. All right now, from here, you're gonna let your left arm go all the way out long. Your right hand's here, it's coming outside your left knee. You're gonna guide that left knee over to the right side of your body. So same thing here, you're trying to push that left knee as low as you can, maybe it touches the ground, maybe not. My left knee doesn't go anywhere near as close to the ground as my right knee did, but it's all right. I'm getting that opening in my left hip. That's what we're going for here. Take a few breaths. And then as you inhale, you're going to bring that left knee up. Hug it into your chest. Now take both knees into your chest. You're going to take your hands 
to the crease of your knee and just rock yourself up to seated position. Now once we're up to seated here, we're going to come around into a tabletop. That's that hands and knees pose. So come with your shoulders over your wrists and your hips over your knees. And then from here, we're going to take a couple cat-cows. Right? So as you inhale, lift your chin up to the sky. Tuck your tailbone under. Let your belly drop. That's your cow. As you exhale, tuck your chin to your chest. Round out your back. Follow up your armpit. That's your cat. Right? So just move in here. I'm going to take this off just so you guys can see my belly and my body moving while we do these. Right? Most of you know cat-cow. And you're like, whatever. I know what I'm doing. It's okay, though, right? But if you don't, right, you really want to tuck that tailbone so that your belly drops as you come into cat. And then as you're coming into cat, you're really arching, tucking your chin, you're rounding your back, you're following your armpit. Right? So it's a movement of the spine above and beyond anything else. Take a few more rounds here. Right? And then meet me back in neutral tabletop. We've come up, now we're going to go back down. So you're going to let your hips go to one side or the other. Swing your legs around. All right, bring it back down to your back. Now you're going to keep your knees bent right now. All right, we're going to come into a supported bridge. All right, so your feet are on the ground. Your knees are right over your ankles. Your hands are at your sides, palms face down. Now, you lift your hips up and you're here in bridge, but you're going to come into a supported bridge. So I want you to take something and support the sacrum the low part of your back. If you have a block, that's perfect. You can slide it under there. See how my sacrum, the low part of my back, just below my pant line, that part of my back is resting on the block, right? So you don't want to get the block too high or too low. Now, if you don't have a block, I know a lot of you don't have a block at home, you can use your blanket. Again, curled up, pull it right under, and let your hip rest down. If you have a bolster, right, you could slide the bolster under there too. It pushes you a little bit higher. These are all good options, right? If you don't have anything and you're like, I don't know what I'm doing, then just clasp your hands underneath your body and then draw those fists right underneath your sacrum and let your hips kind of rest on top of your hands. Right? So it gives you that little lift. Right? So I don't want you to really engage those leg muscles and push those up top. I want it to be relaxed because we're going to play with it a little bit. Right? So now from wherever you are, right, I'm going to move my hands out of the way just so you guys can see what's going on with my body. You can take your hands to cactus arms like I just did if you want to, but it's fine to keep them at your sides. Now, Try extending your legs here. Extend one leg long, then the other, all right? So this is an extended bridge. Now, in my extended bridge, right, I really have to make sure not to let my knees and toes fall out to the sides. You know my toes aren't in the frame, right? But my knees are pointed up to the sky, my toes are pointed up to the sky. It takes a lot of work for that to happen for me because my psoas, that big muscle that connects the upper and lower body, is really tight. And when we come into extended bridge and the psoas is tight, we've got to work to keep the knees and toes pointed up to the sky. My body wants to go like this, right? Now my knees have fallen out to the sides. I'm like, oh yes, I can hang out here. But that's not what we want, right? If you can't keep your knees and toes up to the sky in this extended bridge position, then don't come into it, right? Keep the knees bent. You're getting a little bit of relief in the psoas, although not as much as you would if you extended your legs. But if it's so much effort to keep your knees and toes pointed up to the sky that you're turning them out, then you're not getting anything. We don't want that, right? So keep it all nice and tight. I want you to stay here for another five or six breaths. All right, I'm going to come up, but I want you guys to stay in the supported bridge. A few more breaths. Two more breaths here. Again, if it got to be a lot for you and you had to bend your knees halfway through, that's fine. Wherever you are, all good. All right, now, if you're in extended bridge, if you had your legs extended long, now I want you to bring them in. So everybody's feet are flat on the ground once you're there. You're going to lift those hips up, slide whatever you've got underneath you, out from underneath you, and let your hips rest on the ground. All right, now, from here, again, you're going to extend your left leg all the way long. Take your right knee and hug it into your chest. All right, so we're going to stir the pot with the right knee here first. We're going to do a whole series of things, I should say that first, on the right leg, right, to really open up the right leg. Then we will get to the other leg and do the whole series on the left leg. It's going to take a while, and that's okay. Your legs are going to feel amazing after this, okay? So let's start by stirring the pot. That just means you're going to take that right knee across towards the left side of your body, 
Then push away from your body. Bring it around so it's going out to the right and then pull it all the way back into your chest. So it's like your knee is a spoon and you're stirring a pot of soup up on the ceiling. So you just stir, stir, stir. Just do it three or four more times, just like this. All right, and the next time you have that knee hugged all the way into your chest, go the other way. Take that knee out to the left, take it long, bring it around to across your body and then back in. So just go in the opposite direction of those circles. Do three or four more right here. From here, you're gonna hug that knee all the way into your chest, and then from there, take that leg straight up to the sky. Flex your foot. Now you can grab right now. I just want you to grab gently wherever you can around your right leg. Maybe it's behind your thigh, maybe it's your knee or your calf, right? But once you get there, start to point and flex your right foot. Just point, flex. It means you're gonna point your toes up towards the sky, and then you're gonna flex your foot, draw those toes all the way back towards your face. Do that three or four more times. Do it three or four times the other way. Now come to a stop here. And as you come to a stop here, now I want you to fully flex your foot and really push your heel up towards the ceiling. Start to pull that right leg even closer to your body, walking your hands up as high along your body as you can. Now I want you to keep that leg straight up from my left hand, just so you can see my left leg, my right leg is perfectly straight. Right? Don't bend your knee trying to get it closer to your body. Keep that right leg as straight as you can, press the heel up towards the sky. You really feel that stretch going through the right hamstring. All right? And if you don't wake it all the way up, you can grab your toes and do it like this, that's great. If you can only get up to your ankle, that's fine, or calf, that's fine. If you're behind your knee or if you're on your thigh, it's all good. But keep that right leg straight, keep that foot flexed. That's what's gonna give you the stretch in the hamstring. All right, take three more breaths here, wherever you are. And release that leg, slowly let it float back down to the mat. So you're laying all the way along here, right? Once we've got all the way here, now you're gonna bend both your knees, bring them to the ground again, okay? So we're gonna be back in that constructive rest position. And then what you're gonna do from here, we're still on the right leg, right? So it's still the right leg that's doing all the moving. You're gonna pick your right foot up off the ground. Bring your right knee, Bring your right ankle on top of your left knee so that right knee is falling out to the side in that figure four position with your legs. We're going to come to a basic eye of the needle here at first. So your left foot's going to pick up off the mat and you're starting to draw that left leg in towards you. Take your right hand to the inside of your left thigh. Take your left hand to the outside of your left thigh. Wrap your hands around that left thigh and just pull it in towards you. Now, you can take your left leg and get up to the sky. It'll Make it feel a little bit different if that feels better to you. Stay right there if you like it better with the leg bent, then keep the leg bent. Maybe you're gonna release behind your thigh, drop your left heel to your left glute, and put your hands around your left shin instead. Right, that's an, also an option. The whole goal here is to stretch out the right hip. So as long as you feel the sensation in the right hip, you're doing it right. Your main lever is your left leg. The closer you pull the left leg to your body, the more sensation you're gonna feel in your right hip. Find that edge, that place where there's a lot of sensation going on in your right hip, but not so much that you can't hang out here for a couple more breaths. That's where we want to be, right? You guys stay in the pose. We'll come up so I can move over to the neck. Take about three more breaths. out of your shoulder blades. All right, so we've done this before where we windshield wipe. We're gonna windshield wipe here, but we're gonna windshield wipe with our legs still in this eye of the needle position. So you're gonna drop 
both knees over towards the left, right? Maybe you can get far enough down that your right foot comes to the ground, your left knee touches the ground. Maybe you don't get that deep. You're gonna pull it back up. You're gonna windshield wiper it the other way, right? So you're gonna let both knees start to go to the right. So your right foot's kind of pulling that left knee over again. Maybe you get far enough down that your right knee touches the ground. Maybe even your left knee, but maybe not. Come back up. So I just want you to go back and forth here, back and forth, right? Keep your shoulders anchored as your arms are wide. Let your hips have that full range of motion. Let's do it three or four more times. And then we're gonna bring it back to center. Now, as you come back to center, now you're gonna take that right foot. Now, you're gonna keep your left foot right where it is, plant it on the ground. Lift your right foot up off your left ankle and pull it in towards your body, your right ankle off your left knee. Take your left hand, the outside of your right foot. Take your right arm, you're gonna wrap it around your right shin. So I'm right here. Now, maybe I'm just grabbing my right knee. Yeah, right. Maybe I just grab my right knee. If I can, I'm sliding my right hand further down towards my right foot. Now maybe you can take it where you bring that right foot to the crease of your left elbow. Let that left hand come further up your right leg, and then you can interlace your hands at your right shin. Right? So we call this rock the baby or cradle the baby. You're gonna rock back and forth. Keep your left foot on the ground right now, but kind of use it to drive yourself from side to side. Okay, so you can feel that right hip really open up here. That's what we want. Again, you could be here, you could just grabbing the foot and the knee, or maybe you can get that hand a little bit down, get that hand a little bit up. It doesn't matter, right? Grab wherever you can grab. Let's do it three more times, back and forth. And then come to a stop here. Now, let that right foot float all the way down to the mat as that right foot comes down to the mat. All right, now you're gonna bring your feet together and let your knees fall out to the sides. So we're here at a reclining bound ankle. Right? Now, we're not gonna stay in a static reclining bound ankle. We'll do that in the end after we do that left foot. Right while we're here, in the middle, right? Just take your knees, bring them up together, and then open them back up, right? So we're giving a little clap. It's like you're clapping your knees, bringing your knees together, letting them fall apart. Bring them together, let them fall apart. Do that five or six more times. And then eventually here, you're gonna let both knees come open. Now, as, your knees, as both knees are falling open to the sides here, you're gonna bring them back up. Let your knees touch, and then start to bring your feet out wide to the edges of your mat. So your pinky toes are lined up with the edges of your mat. You're gonna do full windshields here. So again, your arms can come out long, your hands can stay at your sides, your hands can rest on your belly. Whatever you wanna do, right? We're just gonna windshield wipe, letting both knees fall to the left. Maybe your left knee and your right knee hit the ground here. Mine don't, it's okay. Bring them back up to center, drop them over to the right. Again, maybe both knees hit the ground, maybe neither. Bring them back up and just go back and forth, back and forth here for a couple times. All right, now come to a stop here, right? Now I'm gonna hug my knees into my chest and then I'm going to take my right knee all the way to the ground with my right foot by my left glute. So see how I'm dropping my right foot by my left glute and then I'm going to let that right knee fall all the way to the ground. My knee and I lean over a little bit to the right and that's okay. Right? I'm going to grab my right ankle with my left hand right? and then I'm going to take my right hand, grab onto my left knee, pull that left knee more into my chest. Right? So I'm kind of angling it towards my left armpit. Now my right knee is on the ground, right? So maybe you can't get that close. You might be way over here with your left knee and it doesn't come any further, any closer without your right knee picking up. Leave your right knee down and then move that left knee. If it doesn't move very far, that's okay. We're just gonna hold right here for a minute or so. Let's do some different pose. We haven't done this one before. This is good. You feel that opening through the right quad. You feel that opening in the inner hip flexor on the right side. You feel a little bit of opening in the left hip flexor.
And then come here, gently release that right foot with your left hand, right? Slide that right foot over, bring that right foot back to the ground. And then take that left foot, set it back on the ground, you're back here in constructive rest. Now you're gonna bring both knees, hug them into your chest, and we're just gonna rock from side to side here. All right, now come to a stop. We're gonna do all that on the other side. So this time, you're gonna keep your left knee hugged in. Let your right leg go all the way long. So right heels on the ground. Start to stir the pot with that left knee, just like we did on the right, right? So it's hugged in, you bring it across your body towards the right, pulling away from your body, bringing it to the left, and then pulling it back in. Stirring that pot of soup up on the ceiling with your left knee. rounds here and then come to a stop now you're just going to switch directions right first we're going to go over to the left then we're going to push the knee away bring it over to the right and back in do that three or four more times and then come to a stop now from here Take that left leg, kick it straight up to the sky. Right now, take your hands wherever you want to put them around your left leg right now. Right, so first you're just gonna take those right toe, or left toe, left toes, point them up towards the sky. Right, so your toes are pointed straight up towards the sky, and then flex that foot, bring the toes towards your face. So point and flex, point and flex. Just do that about three or four more times, opening up the ankle joint. From there, come to a stop. Now from here, we're gonna to start to circle the ankle around. First go one direction, and then go the other direction. Come to a stop here, okay? You're gonna bring your hands up as you can along your left leg again might be your calf might be your ankle might be your whole foot right start to put that left heel up towards the ceiling and then keep your left leg perfectly straight pull that left leg in towards you right a little i shouldn't say perfectly straight right a little micro bend in the left knee just to protect the knee so just pull that knee in if you want to feel a little more think about your right leg take that right quad press it down towards the mat you can see that my right quad still doesn't press to the mat when i do that but as I press it a little closer, I feel a little more sensation in that left hamstring. All right? So I want you to stay there for about three more breaths. Just opening up that left hamstring. The closer you pull it to your body, the more you're going to feel it, but don't bend it to get any closer to your body. Now from here, you're going to bend into that, you're going to release that left foot, sorry, let your knee bend, drop that left foot back down to the ground, and then bring the right knee up to join it. So now we're here in this constructive rest again. We're going to come to that eye of the needle position. So that means this time you're going to pick up your left foot, put it on top of your right knee, let your left knee fall open. So in that figure four position, pick your right foot up off the mat, start to bring that right leg in towards you. So it's driving that left shin towards your body. You're Left hand's gonna come to the inside of your right thigh. Right hand goes to the outside of the right thigh. So you can interlace your hands around your right thigh. Right, start to pull that leg in towards your body. Now, make it deeper. Maybe you kick that right leg straight up. If that makes it feel better to you, you can flex your foot, you can point your foot, whatever you wanna do, right? Maybe you drop that right heel all the way down, wrap the hands around the shin. Again, another good option. Or you just keep, your, keep where you are with that knee bent and your hands around your thigh, right? The closer you pull that right leg into your body, the more sensation you're going to feel in your left hip. Just like on the other side, we want to find that edge, that place where we're feeling a lot of sensation in that left leg, but not so much that we can't hang out here for a few more breaths. Take about four more breaths here. Release behind 
that left thigh, right? So let, or I said left thigh, right thigh, leave behind your right thigh, let your right foot come all the way down to the ground. Now you're still in that figure four position, right? So we're gonna do our windshield wipers just like we did on the other side. So arms come out long here, right? Or they can stay at your sides if you want them to. If you're gonna drop both knees over to the right at first, maybe your right foot comes all the way, I mean, maybe your right knee comes all the way to the ground, maybe your left foot taps the ground. If you don't get that far down, it's okay. Pull them all back up, drive them the other way. Maybe your left knee touches the ground, maybe you can get both knees to touch the ground. Maybe neither of them are touching the ground. Bring them back up and then go the other way. So we're just going here back and forth, back and forth. Letting our bodies open up. Here. And then we're going to come to a stop. All right, now from here, you're going to take your left foot down, put that left foot on the ground, hug your knees in to your chest. All right, then let your feet come all the way down here. Now, as our feet come down, this time we're gonna open up, you're gonna let the soles of your feet come together. Let those knees open up to the sides. You're gonna come to your reclining down ankle. So when we were on the right side, we did those little flat flaps. Here we're just gonna hold this for a minute, letting those knees fall open. If it feels like too much, push your heels further away from you. Right? Make it more of a diamond shape. If you want more, bring those feet closer into your groin. You do what you want with your hands. I've got mine resting on my belly right now. You can take yours to your inner thighs, push them open, right? You can have them out to the sides. You can have them up overhead. Let the upper body open up. Take about four more breaths here. Release that left foot, bring that left foot back to the ground. Take both knees, hug them into your chest here, right? Before we go on, we're gonna windshield wipe one more time. So you're gonna drop both feet to the ground. And again, you're gonna bring your knees wide so that your feet, your pinky toes are lined up with the edge of your mat, whatever you wanna do with your hands, right? Start to windshield wipe her back and forth here. As we do this, right, as we come to a stop here, what I want you to do, bring both knees as you wind your wiper to the left, right? I'm doing the left first because that's the side you guys can see. I'm just gonna pause here, getting my knees as low as I can, right? And I'm gonna take my gaze over towards my right shoulder. Imagine you had your hands on your belly here, 
Maybe you want to take them out wide if that doesn't feel good. Maybe you want to keep them at your belly or at your side. Maybe you take them to cactus arms. And just make sure that right shoulder is down to the ground and you're looking to the right. Now pull the feet back at the center. They should still be wide. So your pinky toes are still lined up to the edges of your mat. Let those knees go over to the left now. I mean to the right now. I say left because I'm used to doing the left second. We did the right first, you guys can see. Just let those knees fall as far open as they can towards the right side of your mat. Maybe one knee's hitting the ground. If you're like me, neither knee's hitting the ground, but it's all good. Getting that opening through the inner thighs, through the hips. Now, you're going to take your knees, hug them in to your chest, rock from side to side. And then let your legs come down to the mat. Extend them all the way along here. All right? Now, my arms are wide right now. I'm going to roll over onto my left hip. Right? So I'm going to roll onto my left hip. Now I can keep my left arm reaching out like this, or I can take it overhead. I'm gonna let my left ear come to my left shoulder. So I look like this right now, right? So maybe your arm is more out here and you're like this and that's okay, right? But you don't wanna be, we're not trying to stretch out the shoulder here. What we're gonna do is try to stretch the right quad, right? So once you get here, you're gonna take your right foot, bend into your right foot, bring your right heel towards your right glute. So I lifted my right knee up a little bit off of my left. So you guys can see what's going on. I'm gonna take my right hand, grab on, my right ankle and then once I've made that connection I'm gonna let it relax down so my knees are just on top of each other I'm gonna feel that if I keep my knees stacked on top of each other and my body really is in one straight line I'm gonna feel it in my right quad now you might be going I could not grab on to my right foot and my right ankle to save my life right you can just take your hand it could be along your shin it could be at your knee right or if you can't right you're just gonna bend into that right foot bring it as much back towards your glute as you can and then let it relax and just reach that right hand back there. So maybe you're not making the connection. If your quad is that tight, then you're not gonna be able to, and that's all right. right? Just bending it and pushing that heel towards the glute is gonna help you get that stretch that you need. So I want you guys to stay right here. We're gonna hold this one a little longer. Stay about five more breaths. Right, now from here you're going to release that right foot, come back to the long edge of your mat, or come, come a lot back onto your left hip so your legs are long along the long edge of your mat. You're going to roll back onto your back, right, and we're just going to do that the other way. Now I'm going to flip around so you guys can still see me as I do it. You can stay where you are. This time you're just going to roll on to your right hip. All right, again, your right arm can be going out, reaching straight out in front of you. Put your head down on it and move it down a little bit here so that it's going to the frame, right? Or you can have your right arm going up overhead and rest your head on it like that. Now you're going to bend into your left knee, bring your left heel towards your left glute, and then if you can, you're taking your left hand, grabbing a hold of the left ankle, right, and pulling that left heel towards your glute. Right? All we do when we grab onto the foot is just add a little extra leverage, right? We can pull that heel in a little bit closer. Again, if you can't reach your <coughs> ankle, you can grab your chin or your knee, or you just bring the heel as close to your glute as you can and let that left hand rest on your leg or in front of you, it's all good. All right, so we're staying here another minute or so, so we can even out our sides.
two more breaths. And release the left foot. Let your left leg go all the way along. Or the back of your foot. Your left foot right now. Now you're going to bring your left hand down. Now what I want you to do here is just roll onto your belly. Right? And once you're down on your belly, take your hands by your chest and push yourself up into tabletop. So we're back in that hands and knees position here. All right, so we're going to stretch out the hips and the quads a little bit more because that's what we all need, right? So what we're going to do from here, once you're in tabletop, just take your right knee, drag it up to your right wrist. Okay, as you bring it to your right wrist, then you're going to start to walk those right toes across the mat. So you're trying to bring those right toes toward your left wrist as close as you can get them. If they don't get that close, it's okay, right? Stay on your palms, tuck your left toes under, and just start to kind of move that left knee back. Your goal here is to drop your left hip down towards your right heel, okay? So you want to keep some space between your right hip and the ground. My right hip is not touching the ground right now, and that's okay, right? Take your palms, push into them, push yourself up, push your chest open, okay? Like it's something you just heard a lot of noise, you're looking up at it, what, what's going on over there, right? Push up, then once you've done that, let yourself come all the way down. Now all the way might just be relaxed a little bit, your palms are still on the ground, maybe you move your palms a little bit forward. Or it might mean that you can drop down to your forearms. It might mean that you can take your arms all the way out long and come down, let your chest and head be on the mat. Okay, find what works for you. Now, if pigeon is not something that works for you at all, your option here is to go into deer, right? In deer, you let your right hip come all the way to the ground. So I'm gonna roll, let my right hip come down, and then I'm gonna bring my left knee in, I'm gonna bend into my left knee so it's against the sole of my right foot. Then I'm gonna come up, bring my hands, make sure they're in front of my right shin, and just walk it forward like that. Now, you're still a pigeon, most of you, right? If you love pigeon, if pigeon's good for you, that's where you are. I'm just showing this deer as an alternative for people who can't get all the way into pigeon or who it doesn't feel great for, right? Two more breaths. And then when you're ready, you're going to come back up to your palms. Whether you're a pigeon or you're in here, I want you to come back up in that position on your palms. Now, if you're in deer, right, then you're going to stay with your right hip down. If you're in pigeon, then you're staying with your right hip up. Now, you're going to bend into your left knee and bring that left heel towards your left glute, right? And then again, you can use either hand. Maybe if you take your left hand back there, you reach back, pull it in, right? Maybe you're just reaching back there. Maybe both palms are staying down. You're just pushing the heel towards the glute. Maybe you reach back around with your right hand. For some people, that seems easier, right? If that's you, then you do it like that. Like that left palm still pushing into the ground, pushing up, or maybe the right palm, depending on which side you're doing, right? If you're in deer and you've got that right hip down, it looks kind of like this, right? And that's okay. Maybe you want to go there from instead of king pigeon, right? Maybe now you want to let your right heel drop. Maybe you're just pushing that heel back, right? So wherever you are, stay here. Two more breaths. Gently release that left leg, let it come back down, bring both hands back to the mat. So now you're here back in that pigeon or in here, wherever you are, right? Take that left leg on, you tuck your left toes under, bring that left knee in, slide your right foot back, bring yourself back into tabletop here, all right? Now once we're in tabletop, I want you to move your right leg around a little bit. Maybe you just take it back and you press that heel towards the back of the wall, open up that knee joint to that calf, right? Maybe you do some 
fire hydrant circles are opening and radiating up. Right. Or maybe, right, if you're extending it long, closing in, whatever feels good to you so that you can get that blood flow back in the right leg. Once that right leg's feeling good again, we're going to drop it back down, we're back in tabletop. All right, I'm going to turn around here again just so you guys can see what's going on with these poses. Doesn't mean you have to, they're just right there at the top of your mat. But we're going to do the left leg now. So you're going to take your left knee, slide it up towards your left wrist, close as you can get it. Then you're going to walk those left toes across the mat, trying to bring your toes as close to your right wrist as you can. Tuck your left knee under, start to move that left knee back, trying to drop, or sorry, that's your right knee. Tuck your right hand under, move your right knee back, dropping your right hip towards your left heel. So that left hip doesn't come to the ground, right? And then push up, look up, aim your pigeon. Again, pigeon is not for you. Then you're going to drop that left hip down, pull the right knee in against the sole of your left foot, bring your hands in front of your left shin, and walk it out into your deer pose. Right? Now, if you're a pigeon, maybe you're in full pigeon, you're like, Pigeons are okay, but there's no way I can get that in my form. That's okay. Then you're still up on your palms. Maybe you just walk them a little bit forward. Maybe you're still right here. Right? Whatever works for your body. Some of you I know can come all the way down, bring your chest and your head down. If that's you, that's where you should go. For most of us, we're going to be a little tighter on this left side than we were on the right. So we were tighter on our non-dominant side, and this is the right side dominant, so our left side is a little tighter. Now maybe you have more space on this left side because you're left side dominant, or for some other reason, if you have more space on this side, I want you to take it. Right? But if it's feeling a little tighter here, you feel like you couldn't go quite as far as you did on the right, that's totally normal. Don't try to force your body any further. Right? You don't have to look like you looked on the other side. What I want you to do, though, is feel the same thing you felt on the other side. more breaths here. And then whether you're in pigeon or you're in deer, right? Now you're going to bring it back up, come back up to your palms. All right. Now you're going to bend into your right knee, bring your right heel toward your right glute. Again, you can reach it with either hand. Maybe you're grabbing onto it with your right hand, right? Maybe it feels better to go around, grab it with your left hand. But you're pulling that heel in Toward your thighs. You're feeling that stretch in the right quad. Again, if you were in deer, then you're still down on your left hip, right? You're just bending into it. The knee stays down to the ground. You're still pulling that right heel towards the right glute, right? You probably have to do it with your right hand at that point, and that's okay. <laughs> right? So either here in the sting pigeon or a regular pigeon. I mean, or in deer, deer quad. This doesn't count right, right? But if you're in king pigeon or you're with your left hip down, still in your deer, stretching your quad. From your deer position. Take four more breaths. And then we're going to gently release that left foot. Bring your hands, both hands, back to the mat. Push yourself up. Now we're going to make our way back into tabletop from whatever position you're in. Bringing it back into tabletop. Once you're in tabletop, you're going to take those couple breaths again to get that left knee, to get that left leg opening back up. So maybe you just take your legs and you extend that left leg long, push your heel towards the back of the room. Maybe start to fire hydrant, it, fire hydrant in with your left knee. Or maybe you're pulling that left knee in and extending it long. Whatever makes it feel good, you get that blood flow back in the left knee, back in the left hip. All right, now once we're feeling good again, we're going to drop that left knee down to the mat, so we're back in tabletop. We're going to come back down to our back, we're going to finish off here with one last twist, and then we're going to take it to our Shavasana, right? So let your hips fall to one side or the other, swing your legs around in front of you, and then one more time, we're going to lay all the way down on the mat. All right, so we're going to do this just a little bit differently here. Now, we were in that eye of needle position, we're going to come back to that. I'm going to take my right foot, bring it up, put my right knee on top of, I put my 
my right ankle on top of my left knee. Now, your arms are going to go out wide here, so this is a twist, right? So we're going to twist here. So what you're going to do here, right, you're going to take that right foot, you're going to kind of use that right foot to draw your left knee over to the right. And so it's kind of like that eye needle window wipe we did, except we're staying right here with our knees dropped over to the right. Keep taking your gaze over to the left, keep your left shoulder anchored to the ground. Now, like always, right, we do these twists when we do the regular supine twist, you can always take your right hand, Press a little bit further down on your right inner thigh or on your left outer thigh, right? Or maybe you just keep that left arm out long. If you're like, I don't know what this is and I don't like it, you can do your regular supine twist. Just take that right foot, slide it underneath the left and stack your left knee on top of your right and you're in a regular supine twist, right? We're just doing a little something extra here. You're ready for it after all the work we did with our legs tonight. On your next inhale, bring your knees back up to center. Now you're gonna take that left, that right foot, set it back down, and we're gonna do that same twist over here on the left side. So you're gonna pick your left foot up, take your left ankle, put it on top of your right knee. So you're in that figure four position, and then you're using that left foot to guide that right knee over to the left side of your body. Now here, you're gonna take your chin and your gaze over your left shoulder. Again, you can have that right hand pressing down, opening up. More press here. And we always like to finish off with a twist. We twist the yellow card practice. We let our bodies remember what they did today. Next time we come practice yoga, it all seems a little easier. We go everywhere a little deeper. As you inhale next here, pull both legs back up to center. And now just take that left foot, set it down, meet your right. We're back here in our constructive rest position. And we're gonna set up here for Shavasana. Maybe if you have your bolstering your blanket, you wanna use it again, right? You can take your bolster or anything, really, a block, a blanket, put it underneath your knees. If you let the, the joint of your knees, the crease of your knees rest on the bolster, you can let your knees fall to the side of like when we did, we did when we did that extended bridge, right? And sometimes that feels really good, especially if you're having low back issues, it allows for those knees elevated slightly for your low back to relax more. So that's how I like to take it sometimes in these dance classes. You don't have to do that. If you want to lay flat, lay flat. If you want to bend your knees, put your feet on the ground, maybe let your knees fall in against each other, or butterfly your legs, or just roll to your side, right? All good options. Maybe you want to do something I don't even know, right? I just want you to find somewhere to be where now you're perfectly comfortable. You're going to be able to stay perfectly still, and your mind is going to be able to go perfectly quiet. Let your breath guide you to that quiet of mind. Just like we talked about at the beginning of class, we're not controlling it here, we're letting it go. Let your breath do what it naturally wants to do. But you still want to keep that complete focus on the breath, even if you release complete control of the breath. As we release control of the breath, the breath can start to guide us. As we keep our complete focus there, we can start to follow it. It will take us right to a place where there's nothing left in your mind but you and your breath. And when you can get there, that's always going to be your true quiet of the mind.
slowly. First come back and then into the room. Wiggle your fingers and your toes. Feel that in the sensation that comes to the quiet mind. If you want to here, take your arms overhead, do a nice full deep body stretch. And then from there, you're just gonna let yourself roll over onto your right side in a finger position. Take a couple breaths right there, just to reacclimate to our space, let the sights and the sound of the room come back to you. Take as long as you need right here. And when you're ready, and only when you're ready, push yourself up to seated. And you can close here. Okay. So once we're all sitting up, right, let's close with our two Bamari breaths in the room. Bamari breath, we inhale as we exhale, makes all the humming sound in the back of the throat. The OM is the universal syllable, it uses all parts of the throat. You can join me in these breaths. If you'd rather just listen, then just listen. But let's close our eyes here. We'll inhale together. open, bring our hands to our center. Thank you, all of you, for sharing your energy, your practice with me this evening, or in the morning or afternoon or whenever you're watching this video, right? The light in me honors the light in each of you. Namaste. All right, I will see you guys all on uh, tomorrow morning at 1030. We'll do a little vinyasa flow, so join me then. All right, I hope you all have a great rest of your Wednesday night.